What's up everybody? Welcome back to Ian's Life. Today, we're going to continue working on the trailing edge of the wing. So, if you'll excuse the air conditioner on in the background and my voice, which is recovering from a cold, one of the issues we have to sort out on the wing is bracing for the new trailing edge. If you look at the main wing, you'll see what I've been calling, and I may be getting this wrong, drag braces, which run zigzag through the wing and keep it from parallelogramming. Back here, we have to do the same thing because these are obviously not inherently strong in this direction and even tied together, the entire thing would just be able to go back and forth. So what we have done to do that is borrow a bit of inspiration from the rest of it. This is actually an original brace from the original trailing edge, it's a little short. You'll see it's just a little aluminum tube with some pieces flattened on the end. So what we are going to do is place these from here over into the corners. As part and parcel of that, we needed to attach our trailing edge to this strongly because that trailing edge is going to carry the flaps, the ailerons, and there's going to be a substantial amount of pull on it. And to do so, after a little bit of experimentation, we have come up with these guys. This is just a little piece of 040 aluminum, which we have folded up, drilled, and dimple dyed, which allowed me to get a new tool and a new toy over here to dimple dye with. One thing, if you watch all of the series, you'll realize is I love tools. So these guys, as you can see, we've pre-drilled them, are going to get riveted into place on the trailing edge and on to the rib. At the moment, we're thinking that we're going to be able to get away with one on each side of the rib. I don't think we're going to actually double them up, but um, time will tell. We'll see how we feel about that when we actually start to get the trailing edge into place. Speaking of the trailing edge, um, yeah, that's longer than my garage, which is why it's currently going into my attic so that I can actually walk through here. But we also got that material, so that's going to be going on here very shortly as well, at least for a test fit. I still have to get epoxy for that, so that hasn't been glued into place yet, but that'll be coming soon. Uh, in the meantime, we're probably just going to fit it using some Clecos and these brackets. So stay tuned for that. So what we're doing right now is putting the, the trailing edge onto the wing. And we've started that process using just some little wrap straps, the kind you would get at Harbor Freight or somewhere to hold things onto your roof rack of your car or truck. And uh, we've used those to take this piece of tubing and put it into these notches on the trailing edge. And this has actually worked really well. I'm kind of impressed if I'm honest, uh, just how well it's worked. That's holding that in place and now we're going to take these little brackets, like the one my father's holding, 
and uh, drill and Clico those into place. Ultimately, everything is going to be both riveted and uh, glued into place, but for now, we're just gonna get everything pre-drilled and uh, test fit with the brackets just with Clicos. Getting the trailing edge ready to glue on has been a multi-part process and we've had to figure out a lot of things along the way and order a few, not an insubstantial number of things to do it. One of those being the glue that we need to put the uh, anything that is aluminum to anything that is wood. So the trailing edge, which is aluminum, is gonna be bonded to our new rear rib sections with this uh, Loctite high sol adhesive, which is actually the same stuff that you can see traces of in the original build that was used to attach the ribs to the spars and a few other parts. Now, I was told of a little trick you can do with this rather than buying the expensive and wasteful mixing sticks and the very expensive gun to use this stuff. You can go ahead and squeeze it into a sandwich bag and just mix it up, cut the tip off and kind of uh, do like a cake decorating deal and uh, glue with it. Uh, thanks to Steve Henry for that little trick. Uh, and to squeeze things out without the expensive gun, we've taken and modified an old cock gun to uh, go ahead and use this thing like a big epoxy tube, get our glue out of there. So we haven't actually tested this. We'll see how that works. Uh, in the meantime, however, we are deburring these guys and preparing them uh, to actually go on the trailing edge. You saw earlier where we did a test fit, but that was purely a test. We have to glue first, then we'll be gluing and riveting these guys on. But uh, we do not now know that our tooling works and we can get our rivet guns in here, secure these guys down. Uh, at the moment, my father is just over here deburring a few more of these. And then in just a second, we're gonna go ahead and get some glue mixed up and start on the process of getting the trailing edge glued into the ribs. So great success, the uh, caulk gun modifications worked. We've got our little spooge of two parts of glue here. We'll be kind of mixing this together with our hands, kneading it until it's a nice even gray color, applying it. In the meantime, I've been over here. I have, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. This may be impossible to see, but I have scuffed up the trailing edge in our mating area where it was go where we want to have a little bit of tooth to it so that the glue can grab on and attach the wood. Uh, prior to scuffing it, I went over it with paint thinner to clean off anything that was on there. And then after scuffing, I followed that up with uh, an automotive uh, paint uh, wax and grease remover just to ensure that we have an absolutely clean surface. So we're gonna let that stuff kind of evaporate out until we have a perfectly clean surface to put our glue on. In the meantime, as a matter of fact, my father's over here now, just starting to get the glue mixed up. So in just a second, we'll start gluing up that trailing edge. That glue goes further than you'd think it would. It really does, actually. Because, I mean, we have got an awful lot of it left. Well, that cake thing seems to really do the job. Thanks, Steve Henry or the suggestion. I cut the end a little big, to be honest. It's a little messier than it absolutely needs to be. You're gonna go back and wipe it down? Uh, oh yeah, every one of these, I'm gonna go and uh, do a, um, get the fillet right. It's just, I see my gloved hands are gonna be covered in this crap. Mm -hmm. um, and I see no reason to switch gloves three times doing this, so. Nice smooshy fillet of uh, excess glue. Pull that out. And you know, we don't want to be underwhelming on this. So no, no. Getting it on the ribs is actually not a bad thing. Yeah. Exactly right. Folks, I messed up and didn't do a time lapse on uh, installing these gussets on the trailing edge of uh, the wing. I apologize, but let me tell you what I've done. Uh, it was uh, an experiment to see how to glue and rivet these uh, these guys on here, and uh, 
I at first tried to glue and rivet at the same time and found that uh, I end up with glue on everything and uh, the, the, uh, the adhesive is uh, slightly less viscous than toothpaste so it acts like a nice grease and the, the part slides around where you're trying to attach it. So after doing the first two and realizing that nah, maybe this isn't the best way to do this, I came up with a different method and this is what I came up with. I actually glue the part in place uh, and, uh, and use these uh, clamps to clamp it and then I'm going to come back this morning and I'll time lapse this. Uh, I'm going to come back and add the rivets afterwards and you can see as we look down the wing that I've got all of these in place except for the one rib that I have yet to figure out exactly how I want to do. I'll add one there in the near future. Uh, but otherwise, this has really made this uh, trailing edge very, very stiff. And one of the things that we've been talking about doing is to, in order to, to make this absolutely as tough as it can possibly be, we're going to put a cap strip on top and bottom here, down here, and then we're going to take some fiberglass tape and wrap it around here. And uh, with that fiberglass tape coming around the back of this tube, but it would take a tractor to pull that off of there. So uh, I think it's going to make a real tough wing for Ian's rock hopper. Anyway, stay tuned. Uh, we'll do some time lapse. And uh, uh, Ian is, uh, by the way, uh, in Austin today uh, taking his instrument flight exam. Uh, let's hope he passes that. And uh, he'll be back with us shortly with, a, with an addition to his ticket. And uh, we can move on with this project. this is what we're looking at. We've got our nice little uh, 45 degree pieces in here, riveted and glued in place. We're going to add some more glue onto this side since we flipped the wing, but they look great. The trailing edge is on there and it's incredibly solid. This is really great. Um, there's a few other things that you can see in the background we've done, but those are for another video. We've got the cap strips in place. You'll see all of that coming soon though. Um, uh, right now, I'm just really happy with how this turned out. So this video has been a long time in the making, I know. It's been a while since we've done the last one, but we did get a lot of work done. Sorry about the delay. There's some other pieces of work we have been doing in the background at the same time. So this one is kind of gonna be interspersed with some other stuff that just didn't make sense to put in here. It's gonna be in another video. So stay tuned for that. We've got more coming soon. I've got more of the RANs coming soon. I've got some stuff I've been doing and recording there. So we've got a lot of cool stuff on the way. So until next time, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.